Hello everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to your Legion. It's really funny that when I think about it because where I started, I started at the bottom. And that's how I feel I became an enthusiast because I actually started at the bottom. I purchased computer components that I could afford and actually tried to go ahead and tweak them up. Well, EVGA has just launched the GTX 950. Of course, this is the GeForce GTX 950. And this is what I would call a budget gamer card. And the great thing about this is this is the area that I started in. These are the cards that I used to buy when I was coming up in the world and before I started reviewing and stuff like that. And what I used to do is I used to take them, I used to tweak them, I used to do so many different things with them just to make them better and maybe perform as well as the higher end cards did. And it caused me to learn. And that's what the main thing was. So we're gonna take a look at this and hopefully this is something that'll help you guys who are starting out or who just feel that you're not ready for the upper echelon maybe learn a little bit we'll start by taking a look at the box all right this is a little bit different because i'm not used to seeing an evga box like this so basically i mean it's still the same colors and everything as the other box is but the difference with this box is that it doesn't have the plastic clamshell in it anymore to for the video card and believe it or not i think that this is a little bit more sturdy than the the other way with the cla plastic clamshell and it gives a little bit more protection to the card when it's actually in transit of course on the front it says evga it says 950 this is for the win edition and on the back, we have a few of the NVIDIA GeForce Experience things that you could do, different things that you could do with the card. Inside of the box now, you're going to get a PCIe connector. I still don't know why people use these, but if you're still using it, I have no clue. But this is a DVI to a VGA. You're going to be getting a case badge which comes with just about every EVGA product now. And last but not least, we're gonna have our user's manual with our quick startup guide. And it does tell you that this is important here that the fans do shut off. These are zero dB fans on this cooler. And we also have a nice little poster. Now I'm not gonna open it because I'll never get it closed and it'll take me about four minutes. Now you'll see that since it's packaged that way, we actually have two different types of anti-static bags with this. We've got the plastic anti-static on the outside, the bubble wrap. And then inside of it, we have another anti-static bag. That says EVGA on it, of course. So when we open that up, first thing you're gonna notice is that the card is a fair, fairly decent size here, okay? Fairly decent size, it's a full size card. It's not like maybe the past versions of the 650 tie, the 650, the uh, 750 where they were about half the size. This is a full version of the card. It does need an eight pin power connector in order for you to start it up. It has a beautiful back plate on the back. The other good thing about this is you have a DVI port you have one, two, three display ports, and in the center there, you're going to have an HDMI port. It's PCIe 3.0, and if, as long as you don't have grease on your fingers, you can touch it. Don't be afraid to touch it. Just don't eat, you know, like a, a sloppy joe or something, and then go ahead and decide to touch it. Now, as you can see, we have dual fans. The dual fans are part of the ACX 2.0 system, they are uh, dual ball bearing, and they are made to actually give you longer life. They have better downward force, so you're going to reduce turbulence coming through the uh, through the heat sink. And we also have the straight heat pipe cooling. Now, of course, what's good about straight heat pipes? Straight heat pipes means that the vapor is going to go back and forth without friction. When you have a curved heat pipe, you're causing friction. 
Friction causes heat, and what is heat gonna do? It's gonna heat up your card. I will tell you this much. When I overclocked this card and used Precision X for the tuning, I changed the fan controls to their performance mode and just used their basic fan curve that they have already in there. I was actually 10 degrees Celsius cooler than I was actually using just normal without overclocking this. So my, my, my load temps were 68, just running everything stock. And then when I overclocked and turned on, the program, the the uh, the fan control, it actually went down to 58 degrees Celsius. It's a really nice card. It's very durable. Now with this one, since it's ACX 2.0, you're not getting that Mofset plate, that extra Mofset plate cooler. That's what makes it 2.0, and that's the difference between 2.0 and 2.0 plus. You're going to be very impressed with the benchmarks coming out of this card. This is a card that I actually found to kind of, like I said, to remind me of back in the day when I was the one who was using these. I'll tell you, budget gaming has come a long way since I first started. Because when I first started, even when I was, even though, although I was overclocking and doing different things with the cards, I was never able to really reach the pinnacle of where I could game at the most popular resolution at the time. Nowadays you can. EVGA and Nvidia did a great job with these cards for, a, for being a budget card. Right now, 1080p is the, is the mainstream. That's what a lot of people are gaming at. I know that we do have 4K and we have 1440, but most people are still gaming at 1080p. This card will game at 1080p at high settings on any game that you want. I didn't get that back then. I was still, even though I might have been able to overclock it and give myself some great performance, you know, back, back in, you know, dinosaur days, I guess you could say, but... I was able to, you know, increase the performance, but I was never able to get the eye candy that I really wanted. I would basically just get the frame rates, but nowadays you don't have to worry about it. You're playing in acceptable frame rates with great eye candy in all games, not just MOBAs, not just MMOs, not just RTS. I'm talking first person shooters and some of the most demanding games out there today. This is the first time I've actually seen a card that can expand that whole spectrum. Honestly, you know, compared to the AMD card, I'm going to say this. You know how they say how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? And that's three. Well, I guess when AMD decided that they were going to rebrand their 370 for the first time, they actually made a mistake. As you can see in the benchmarks, the numbers were actually lower than the 270. Why? Don't ask me. I didn't develop the card, but I could probably tell you why, because they took it too far to the max. It was a mature card, last generation, they went the third generation, and now they just stuck their foot up their butt, basically, with that card. Now is it a viable card? Yeah, for somebody who wants it, but when you could spend $179 for this card, 
Those are 159 on their base models. Of course, when you start putting aftermarket cooling and everything on it, you're going to be up about 179. Plus, EVGA is even giving you a $10 rebate on this. So now, if you go to Newegg and I think maybe even Amazon, there's a $10 rebate on this card. It's 169 for the for the win, and this is the highest model that EVGA makes for this series. So you've got the super clock, you got the super super clock, then you got the for the win, and this is the for the win. And this is probably going to be the meat of the market card. This is the card that you are definitely going to want because not only does it have great high speed clocks out of out of the box, I mean, at, at, four, at 14.44 that I got with the boost, of course I know it's 14.02 on, on the regular clock is what they say they guarantee you, but 14.44 on the boost, and then a 15.88 with the overclock on the boost, I mean, this thing's a monster. It's gonna barrel through anything that you want. I wonder how it's gonna do on folding. I didn't have a chance to fold with it, but I can guarantee you it's gonna be a great folding card also. So you're gonna be able to play MOBAs, and NVIDIA, just basically redid all of GFE, the GFE experience, to where they actually put some, some nice technology to make, create lower latencies when you're playing like Dota 2 or uh, League of Legends, and then I guess Heroes. So right now they have three of them where you're gonna lower the latency so you're gonna get better responses when you're playing a MOBA. So you've got a lot of technology come, uh, with this card. You've got a lot of good technology that EVGA has put in there. You have one of the highest factory overclocks that you could possibly get. You're also going to get great technical support with EVGA, some of the best in the business. I just want to say to everybody, thank you very much. You have a great day. I'll see you the next time. Stay thirsty, my friends. Bye-bye.